Hello everyone, my name is Jin Yue Jue. I'm the Asia Head of Investment Specialist for the Asset Management Solutions with JP Morgan Asset Management. Today I'm here with Stash Away to really try to answer some of the biggest questions around fixed income investing. The first question is, how does fixed income contribute in the well-balanced investment portfolio? Now, when we look at fixed income, it plays a very crucial role in the well-balanced portfolio for a number of reasons. The income generated from fixed income instruments are often more attractive than pure cash deposit. But on the other hand, when you look at the volatility profile, it tends to be lower than equity and hence provides a bit of capital preservation, especially during time of market turbulence. Within the corporate structure, fixed income also sits higher than equity. So in the event of liquidation, you know, bondholders can actually have a higher claim versus a shareholder. But what's more important here is that fixed income instruments often respond differently to economic conditions than equities. And this lower correlation really provides benefit of diversification to an overall portfolio and really adds a bit of resilience to your overall portfolio. Now let's look at the second question. What are the, some key factors um, in, that investors should look out for when it comes to fixed income investing? There are a number of factors that you should really be aware of and you should really watch out when it comes down to fixed income investing. The first one is maturity, which is the date when the bonds will mature and your principal will be paid back to you. And the second one is the coupon, which is the interest rate that you're receiving from the bonds. And that is often paid semi-annually or annually. And then the third one is credit rating, i.e. the credit quality of the bonds, which is essentially the likelihood that the bond issuers will honor its financial obligation. Now, all these are actually related to the quality and the potential risk exposure that you are exposing yourselves to when you are buying into these bonds investing. And to put it simple, the longer maturity the bonds are, the more sensitive the bond price will be towards interest rate changes. And similarly, when you look at credit rating, the higher credit quality, you know, the safer potentially the bonds can be. But on the other hand, it's usually paying out lower yield because it doesn't have to compensate the credit risk that you're potentially taking on. So all these considerations are very important when you think about fixed income investing, because on one hand, you want to make sure that you're exposing yourself to the right amount of uh, risk but on the other hand, you also want to make sure that you are gaining enough of the return that are actually meeting your return requirement. Now, let's look at the third question. Can you explain what happens behind the scene of a managed fixed income portfolio? Fixed income investing for even a professional investor is actually not easy. There are a lot of active decisions, you know, happening behind the scene. And when we look at fixed income investing, it's essentially we can, you know, break down into two very big important decisions. One is the, the first one is the top-down asset allocation decision, which is to assess the macro environment and to decide, you know, whether the economy is doing well or how the monetary policy will move forward from now. And that will essentially determine how you want to construct your bond portfolio. You know, how much duration, which is interest rate sensitivity you want to have with your portfolio, how much credit risk you want to have, you know, the list can go on. But on the other hand, it's also very important to conduct a thorough, rigid, bottom-up secure selection, which is to make sure that you have the right bonds in your portfolio. And that, that you know, you have to go through in details you, the financial fundamentals of each of the issuers, making sure that they are going to honor their financial obligations. But what's more important here is how you combine the two components into a coherent portfolio. And that's where a portfolio manager actually comes in. You know, they're acting like a conductor for a symphony orchestra, really to make sure that each parts are played perfectly, but then each parts are being coordinated, you know, in a very harmonious way. But there are other functions 
You know, that's the valuation, that's the performance monitoring, that's the guidelines monitoring. All these functions are equally important to make sure this performance is really achieving its success. The next question, how do you balance yield enhancement with risk management in JP Morgan's strategy? I think a balance between yield enhancement and risk management is very crucial. Um, you know, driving the longer term success for a fixed income portfolio. You know, the way we approach this is to really focus on, you know, all the yield opportunities from a risk adjusted lens. In other words, we are not aiming to reach merely just for the highest yield in the market without considering the risk that we are taking on. And that's why it's very important to conduct you know, thorough research on credits, thorough research on the macro environment, making sure that we are being compensated for the yield opportunities that we're taking on and we're not exposing ourselves you know, to an excessive level of risk. And that, that actually involves a lot of work behind the scene, including you know, thorough research, stress testing, sensitivity analysis, etc. But ultimately, you know, I think it is key to strike a balance. You want to make sure that you are exposing to the right level of risk, but you are also getting attractive income. And all of these should be aligned with the investor's ultimate goal in terms of their return objective, but also in terms of their uh, risk tolerance. So the next question is, how might geopolitical events impact fixed income markets in the near future? When we look at impacts from geopolitical events, it often impacts fixed income markets through two channels. The first one is investor sentiment. And the second one is really making changes to the economic fundamentals. When we look at the first one, i.e. the investor sentiment, Geopolitical events can really trigger market volatility and cause a flight to safety assets. And that's generally positive for treasury bonds, which are considered as the safer assets in the market. So yields will come down and the price will go up because there's always an inverse relationship between the two. But that impact is often short term. And when we look at the longer term implication, it really comes down to whether that geopolitical events will cause any changes in the fundamentals. And when we look at geopolitical events, that could potentially lead to weaker economic growth, which is generally positive for bonds, but that could also trigger higher inflation, which could be negative for bonds. But very often, when geopolitical events happen, there are usually multiple forces that are happening at the, at the same time. So you should really look at the interplay between these different forces to really understand you know, the implication of each of the forces and how these forces are interact with each other. And that's why having a resilient, diversified portfolio that are balanced positioned and not taking on excessive level of risk is very important to actually navigate these complex, um, complex macro environment. The next question, interest rates are currently higher um, than we've seen in recent years. And what's your perspective on where yields might go from here and should investor secure these rates now? Our overall view on this market is that we think global economic growth is moderating, but will remain solid for near to medium um, term future. And on the other hand, inflation is cooling. That really provides a window for central banks to start to ease on their monetary policy. This backdrop is essentially positive for bonds. So over medium term, we are of the view that duration or bonds in general will have a positive backdrop. But on the other hand, when we look at yield level now, yields compared to history are at a quite high level, which means from a valuation perspective, bonds are relatively cheap, not just on a standalone basis, but also compared to where the equities are trading. So that's why we think that right now is actually an interesting opportunity for investors to start to consider bonds. 
But when you think about you know, starting a portfolio of fixed income investing at this moment, we also think that investors should be mindful of the market volatility because bonds volatility you know, has been really increasing over the recent past. That's why approaching a fixed income at this moment, even though the timing is attractive, really requires a bit of cautious approach i.e. you should approach fixed income with a diversified approach, not to concentrate too much on one segment, but rather to think about a balanced approach with a diversified exposure that will provide a more smooth ride uh, going forward. The next question is, what's a common misconception about fixed income investing that you'd like to clear up? I think when the investors looking at the name fixed income, they think of fixed, which means stable, safe, but that's not true. Fixed income, investing come with a variety of risks still. Even though they are less volatile than equity, there are still some potential risks that you should be aware of, which includes interest rates risk, um, includes um, um, credit risk, and also liquidity risk. And the, the list actually goes on. That's why risk management is at the core of having a successful fixed income portfolio. And managing the risk properly is not only helping you to mitigate the downside risk, but it can also potentially becoming a alpha source, which helps you to achieve additional total return above coupon. And that's why risk management, thinking about risk when getting into fixed income is very important. The next question, if you could give one piece of advice to a new investor, uh, what would it be? So remember, fixed income are like cats. Sometimes they sit there and do nothing for a long time, but sometimes they all of a sudden act out of unexpected way. So that's why with fixed income, you should be patient, be disciplined, be always mindful of the potential risk, do not reach out only for the highest yield without considering the risk, but at the same time, be nimble and flexible. With that, I wish you all have a successful journey with your fixed income investment.